Hi guys, this is Simeon from Swedish Homestead. Today is going to be a great day. It's beautiful weather, but we are also expecting 18 meters per second wind gusts today. But nevertheless, it's blue sky, no cloud. I'm going to go outside, do my morning chores, and then I'm going to do some other stuff, and you guys are going to tag along. So, let's go. Okay guys, I just got done with my chores, it took me a bit longer today, but I just want to get, get you up to date on a few changes that I've made here in the greenhouse especially, and then uh, we'll go and do some other stuff. So as you can see here behind me, the geese are in here now, and that's because they sense that it's getting warmer, spring is coming soon. The old experienced mama goose that, um, ro that raised eight little geese for me last year she went out of her um, fence and she was walking around trying to find a place to settle and this morning the first egg was here I put them in the greenhouse here now because um, I don't want them walking freely outside I'm not allowed to yet because of some sicknesses for the birds and I want to control it here when they lay their eggs unfortunately so you guys saw in a video last fall, a fox or a badger took one of my geese, and that was the papa goose. So today, um, a man is coming by who has some geese as well, and he has a male one, and we'll see if we'll be able to get some fertilized eggs and hatch them um, later this spring, just for ourselves. So the geese are in here. And I also did something with the little pigs, let me show you. So as you can see here, um, the pig feeder and the pig waterer are taken apart. It's not standing here anymore by the pigs. The pigs are <laughs> a bit hungry now. They don't have free access to feed anymore. I'm gonna make little holes and pour the feed on the ground for them. They have emptied half of this barrel with free access to feed, which I think is totally fine at the age they're at right now. And um, now I'm going to control their feet a bit more and I just have to figure out a good way how to give them water here because they like to tip it over. And over here the girls are really busy laying their eggs. So um, yeah, this is what has happened in the greenhouse. Now let's go outside. So in this field is where the geese have gone all winter um, and they've had the shelter and I've had an electric netting surrounding them uh, except for by the greenhouse I've just had two wires there which has been enough to keep predators away but that's where the mama goose just went out now but um, yeah I will remove this fencing now and then take a look at the pasture with you guys wow it is so windy my tripod just almost blew over hope you guys can hear me and everything I will take a look at this pasture. This pasture was full of tree stumps um, just a couple years ago. An excavator came at a very wet time of the year and made a lot of holes and damaged the pasture a bit, which is a big bummer. We would not do it like that again. We learned our lesson, but we want to go back there now. I want to go back there and check how much I have to fill in. We have some soil and wood chips from when a guy grounded up a tree stump somewhere else a few cubic yards and um, I will see if I can fill those places off the pasture in in the future I'll just take a look now say real quick those rock walls that you see in my videos sometimes that are here on our property somebody commented that we should repair those those are not broken that's how they are that's how they have been and you're not allowed to touch them because they are a cultural inheritance I'm not sure if that's the right term in English but um, you're not allowed to touch them or move rocks just because of their historic uh, value um, 
these fences, this electric netting, these are originally from our sheep. Um, I will be, I, I will have to buy poultry netting, electric poultry netting, which is much better. Last year, because of money and because we were testing the system, I just tried it with this and the chickens could have gone through there, which just happened a few times. Otherwise, they even stayed inside of this sheep netting that is lower and has bigger squares. So um, it worked quite well. This is something I will have to do a lot this, uh, this season, build these up and take these down. And um, I just want to show you guys real quick um, a few tricks that I've learned um, when I have been working with these. The first time I worked with these is about, let's see, uh, 13 years ago. And that was in Germany with a shepherd. We had about 800 sheep and we would raise them with shepherd dogs during the day and then at night we would build these up for the sheep and take them down the next morning and move on again with the herd and um, that is that was really good that was really a good way to learn this now everything even the things that seem simple there is a fast and efficient way to do them that takes practice even to just gain a few percent of time just a few minutes in it all. In the long run, that's the margin where you can earn money with, for example. And even with taking down or building up these fences. Now when you roll it and, and pack it up, for example, you just want to flap these two back corners and then you roll it up like this. Turn it around. And then you have on the bottom and the top, you have these straps here. Let me go so you guys can see. On the on the bottom and the top you have these straps here. And so you you go around and then you want to the knot you want to go through here twice and tie it together like that. That way when you release it it stays at the place. It doesn't come back up and you just make a knot in there. The same on this side. You just take both ropes, put them around. You go through once and twice, just tie it together. It stays at the place and you can just make your knot. Now this way, this is packed. It goes very quickly, very efficiently. And when you build them up, you know, just open it. You go ahead and uh, some of you might think that's ridiculous that I show this, but it's just these little things, you know, if you want to speed things up, if you want to do this quickly and your chores should be made, should be done thoroughly but as quickly as possible. If you take all day for your chores, you are not able to build something new. You're not able to uh, develop something. So chores should go quickly. Okay, let's go check on the field. So you can see here already how there are, um, yeah, just some tracks from the excavator driving here. Let's see over here, you see, um, I don't know how well you can see this on the camera actually, but there are a lot of holes. We want to make hay on this field eventually, and this is going to be a very bumpy ride. You see here, um, there was probably a tree stump here that he dug out. Um, it's not everywhere, but there's a bunch of areas where it's like this. Look at this. Here you can see, and then all these. It's gonna be a lot of material that we have to fill in here. It's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be quite a challenge to get this to be evened out. I don't really want to plow this or till this much rather fill it in. Worst case scenario in my opinion is if we have to get a till it costs a lot of money to get that machine here. A lot of rocks in this ground. Here you can see that's where the excavator sunk in again. In this field this is where we had our layers on last year. They did a fantastic job of uh, scratching out the cow pies and really fertilizing this field. Here you see is a big hole. Um, this is where a tree stump was. 
Boy, that's a lot of material. But anyways, we would love to be able to both grace and grace this field and use it for for hay. But it's just not there yet. When we moved here, when we moved here, all of this bottom area here, it looked like he had planted fir trees here, or um, excuse me, spruce trees for, uh, yeah, for Christmas trees. They were all over, and up here were birch trees. You see those birch trees right there? Those are the remaining one. This whole pasture was full of them. But yeah, here's what we have to fill in. Let's go take a look how much material we have to fill it in with. Okay, here, here you have it. The piles have like gone together a bunch, but here is it where it's laying everywhere. And I, all I can do is just drive it up there and spread it out and see how far I come with it. But the chickens, they will do an incredible job of just scratching all of this out of, a, out of the tracks and the holes again. So I'm not sure what I will do. Okay guys, let me finish this video real quick. I want to share real quick some information about um, why I can't have my um, poultry outside yet. And that's because we've had this, what we call bird flu here. I, I don't know, I, maybe the technical term in English is a little different. You guys know what I mean though. There have been some um, wild geese and all, that kind of stuff, both in Germany and Sweden, that have died and some farms have been infected. And um, the, the Swedish Agricultural um, Center, whatever you call it, department, they say that you cannot have your chickens outside. Only if you have a um, backyard hobby chicken flock, you can have that. And with geese or ducks that you can't keep inside, but then you have to feed their, um, them water and feed um, in a contained or roofed area. So that's why the geese have been able to be outside. But in this w mild weather, it has been so mild all winter long and it is mild right now, it would have been perfect for me to already now put some chickens out in the chicken tractors, um, some bigger chickens that are more hardy already, and um, really just start to fertilize the fields that we are gonna use for cutting hay. And also to prepare some garden areas, oh my. Um, stay tuned this week. This week there will be, um, at the end of the week, there will be a video coming where we will um, share a little bit more about how we sell eggs and we'll have a big egg delivery for us big starting up this spring now and uh, hope you guys can tag along. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.